I'm Ned Overend. I live in Durango, Colorado, and uh, the bike I've got with me here is the Specialized 1992 M2. If you talk about riding these bikes out on the trail today, if you were to do that today, it would be primitive and sketchy. I mean, I, I'm a total full suspension guy. You don't see many hardtails in here. I mean, I've got one hardtail hanging up over there, and it's a, it's a single speed, and uh, it's not getting a ton of use, even just the wheel size. You know, when I go back to riding a 26 inch wheel down a rough downhill, your body has to become the suspension. You have to use so much more energy to uh, not only get up rough things when you're climbing, but to not go over the bars when you're doing a fast downhill. You have to have a whole different body position. It took a lot more energy to go slower. It's pretty cool. You know, and then I'll tell you, when I see this bike in particular with the red frame and the uh, tension disc, the memory that comes to mind is like Tomac and I chasing each other or dueling around Red Lake at Mammoth. And I don't know if you remember that, but it's about two thirds of the way up the hill. You know, you'd climb and then, uh, then there'd be a flat area where we went around this lake, but it was kind of open and exposed. And, you know, I would always try and drop him on the climbs because I'd need a bit of a buffer. You know, and I'd like to go into the downhill single track first because then it would force him to pass me. It wasn't easy to pass him there. So I could kind of hold him off. And I mean, it was, it was a constant battle every lap. He'd beat me on the downhills and, and I would kind of claw back on the climbs and then put enough time on him and we'd try and wear each other out. And sometimes those, those cross-country races in Mammoth were sometimes two and a half hours, you know, and it wouldn't be really decided until the last, you know, the last lap, last 15, 20 minutes of the race. Well, back on the course, Ned Overend's performance is, well, blossoming as Overend has taken over the lead. And he is a man that it is hard to take the lead away from. Overend just looks so confident, so smooth. This is an endurance sport. Back into town, Ned Overend cheering for him here as they do in his hometown of Durango. He's become a local hero. Ned Overend climbing out of town for the last time. Ned Overend, you can tell by the forearms, the man is fit throughout his body. He's 37, but with the body of a 27-year-old. And the enthusiasm of a seven-year-old who just got his first bike. But the man who's gonna take it all and is on his way into Vail, Colorado is the incredible Ned Overend. Overend wins this World Cup final. You know, I had to <coughs> Google the, some of the victories I'd had on it. Found, uh, I won a Norba National at Mammoth on this. I won the World Cup Finals at Vail one year, which was, you know, big, a big win for me, World Cup Finals. And then uh, I was second in the Hoofleys World Cup, which is a big deal getting on the podium at a race in Europe. This tension disc is produced by Seguino, this is Kevlar strands that are under tension. There is no actual spokes in this wheel. There's a little bit of give to it. So it acted a little bit like suspension. You didn't hear it as much because the, the sound was kind of behind you. The woo, 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 woo sound. The crowd could hear it coming and the guys who were riding behind you and around you, it was, you know, they could definitely, it was a distinct noise that, that people were making when they were riding a tension disc, so. That part was kind of cool, actually. If you didn't set the brakes up properly and you were in a corner and it was a rough corner, the, the wheel could flex and the brakes could uh, fold under the rim. So I always had to be, make sure that I set the brakes so that they contacted pretty high on the rim so there was a little margin of error there. And after this, they were trying to design them you know, with larger lever arms or more leverage in the in the brake levers because these definitely did not slow you down very quickly. So, you know, we used three chain rings and the, uh, the chain ring technology, you know, you don't see any ramps or, or anything in the chain rings. And uh, if you look at the chain stay, a major factor in uh, racing in those days was chainsaw. To me, still, the front derailleur is, is one of the most primitive mechanisms on the bike. They never really totally figured it out. I mean, one thing now going to single chain rings, you know, it's not really solving the problem of how primitive the front chain ring is, it's just eliminating the problem. That's a huge benefit to go to one chain ring. And they're doing it, you know, just by kind of having a rear derailleur that has you know, more technology built into it so it can cover a wider range in the back. It's pretty cool to see uh, 
how far technology in cross-country bikes has come. This is a uh, 2015 Epic, but it's essentially the same as a 2016 besides a, a few graphics. Our 2016 S-Works Epic will come with a dropper post. The Epic has won the World Cross-Country Championships. So, so some of the interesting differences, I mean, obviously this is a full suspension bike. And one thing Specialized has is a pri proprietary technology, that's a mouthful, what we call the brain shock. Now it's evolved to a 29-inch wheel, so that's another big difference between that 1992 M2 is that these things have 29-inch wheels. 1987 World Championships in, uh, it was in Villard de Lens, France. So this was kind of the first race that called itself the World Championships, but in 87 I actually won the, uh, the European Worlds and I also won the Mammoth Worlds. I, I won the Norman Nationals that year too. 87 was a good year for me and that was my last year riding for Schwinn. In 88 I started with Specialized. It was really good timing. You know, we, we were really fortunate in that, uh, you know, if you look at, at Tomac and Tinker, you know, Weens, Rishi and I, there was a lot of focus on it, and it, it built our names up. We were on the cover of the magazines when every Norba National was on ESPN, you know, televised. So uh, we got a lot of exposure back then, and, and people remember it. It was interesting. When uh, I finished the world, and I had, in fact, won it, it wasn't so much just like joy, it was more just like a relief. Since then, I've had a lot of time to enjoy it, right? I'm still enjoying it. Look at Ned Overend. Nothing disturbs his confidence. Nothing disturbs his game plan.